Oh, right, I forgot to finish my main statement. Uh, I overran my time, that's okay. So, um, let's see, I'm gonna put, here I'm gonna put system, uh, get, and they have to include the library for that, which is CONIO. on a.h and I'm gonna just close the brackets here because so let's check this out and the sum of the two numbers is 24 let's go back to the numbers 7 plus 3 and 16 plus 7 yes the sum is 24 that's such a nice sum so let's actually copy this over and let's test it out for all of the so the difference, the uh, I forget how to say uh, the quotient. You know here the result of multiplying lying the the two numbers is my calc so here we have my calc multiply oops multiply here we had my calc subtract <laughs> divide um, power po power I think and apps Absolute apps negative ninety nine. Uh, so absolute value of ninety nine is uh, the power of the first in. the power let's just call it the power Oops. so we need an escape character for both of these the power of the two numbers is my calc power my calc divide so that's it and now I can let's check this out so the sum of the two numbers is 20. Oh, sorry. S ah. The sum of the two numbers is 24. The difference of the two numbers is negative 9.4. Uh, the result, we, by the way, we could put an absolute value and it will give us all, always the positive difference. It doesn't matter. The result of multiplying the two numbers is 121.91. And I'm too lazy to multiply them out. But actually, if we start out uh, the. What I want to the wrong thing. Uh, calculator. Uh, okay, calc. We can start up here and we can uh, fool around with the, the two numbers. I had six, six, 16.7 I think. 16.7 uh, times 7.3 something like this. Oops. Se 7.3 3 121.91 so ours is correct the quotient of the two numbers is that number I believe that the power of the two numbers is some big number I believe that and the absolute value of negative 99 is 99 so here we put negative 99 how about let's let's just say that we decided we wanted integers right away and I can change this from double to an int and now run this again and you see uh, like all of our results uh, are integers and the quotient of the two numbers is zero and something like that so let's see 
Mm. Now it throws us an error because it says we're passing doubles, but we call it as an integer. But we know, so we can do this with whatever. You can do this with a character, although that won't be really useful because let's see what let's see what happens. I bet it will throw an error, actually. And now you have these little characters popping up everywhere uh, because yeah. The quotient even doesn't show up, but uh, these show up as the characters, probably by the ASCII symbol. I've never seen this one before, but... So you could say this with string. That, that's the purpose of templates, you can do anything. Uh, well, in this case you can't, because it doesn't take a string, so calculator float. I can put it in both float and it will do the same thing. Doesn't matter. So float does the same thing as a double. Uh, I can put a long, a short, long, unsigned, long int. And now you get this huge number here and here and here. So that wasn't probably wasn't smart. Unsigned double. I could do this though, and let's see what we get then. Uh, so, well, unsigned double doesn't make sense really, but so. Yeah, basically you can do this with any any data type, and here is our class. It's it's really simple and it's really dubious. So, yeah, that's it. And I hope you enjoyed this lesson pretty much. So, as you understand, templates are there for making things easier. So if you want if you want to to make a separate class for double, for float, for string, for an integer, but they they all do the same thing. You can just put a template with a type name T. And then refer to that template and reuse your code really efficiently. So this this comes in handy. And uh, sorry, I still haven't woken up um, yet. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this lesson, and I'll see you soon.